Uh, G- Gen Z calls uh, people that use Zoom Zoomers. So we're all Zoomers oh. now. So. Zoomers. Yeah. That's not good. That's not here good. Go. Hey, hey, Zoomers, we're coming up here in yeah. five seconds. Here we go. It is 810 News Talk, Saga 960 Raw. Mike Richards along with David Bastel. And as I mentioned beforehand, looking at some of the scores yesterday in Major League Baseball, I assume some of the guys who went to the mound were completely hammered. Not only not only were they must have been drunk. They also took the gas can with them because there were some performances yesterday that I'm pretty sure even their parents were going, do, do you know the rules of the game? Like, uh, was that your first day? Because you're terrible. Uh, the Blue Jays found that out the hard way. Or maybe it was the Boston Red Sox saying, by the way, uh, we're not the Rangers. So <laughs> this is how baseball is really played. Just so you know, guys who actually swing the bat and hit the ball. This is what we do at the bigger league. That was a pounding yesterday, a rude awakening, but still, you know, the nationals won 18 to one. It was uh, the Mets doing what the Mets do, which is everything seems to be ugly these days. F- 15, 11 and in extra innings and Detroit nipping the Rangers. And once again, the Rangers not figuring out exactly how the sport works, losing 14 to 14 to nil as they'd say across the pond, uh, just a weird, uh, <laughs> worried circumstance. And now we go, and gee, for the first time in a long time, been too long, mm-hmm. our good friend Tom Rominski from The Score. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, Tom, hey, Rominski. Hey, Ladies hey. gentlemen. Tom Rominski. Come back now. Hey, guys, it's awesome to be uh, chatting on the radio again. Um, obviously, uh, things are picking up with the Blue Jays, and uh, it's going to be a fascinating second half. So It's going to be a great second half. And now that you actually get to see a team from, as some people say, Toronto, when they say that second tee, it just, I swear to God, it drives me nuts. <laughs> but a Toronto team playing in Toronto, how about that? There's some guys in the team who haven't done this yet. <laughs> There's some guys who are going, oh, so this is this, what's the tower? What's that called? The CN Tower? Interesting. Very interesting. And so the, the roof, it, yeah, opens and closes. You don't say, wow, what an interesting city. Are we staying for a while? Like, it's just so, what a strange circumstance. And yet. The timing of it, wouldn't it be weird? Okay, put let's add, is it, could we could we see? And I think Dave talked about this the other day, a, a 2015 weird uh, run, uh, you know, this magical bat flipping, uh, you know, group of guys because you know, Boston's good, Tampa's so good, Yankees are naked. Like, can could they have a run like that? Yeah, Dave, I uh. And Mike, I I definitely feel uh, that's the case. A lot of similarities between uh, the 2021 squad and the 2015 squad. Uh, In particular, if you look at run differential and the Mm. record overall and just the style that uh, the two clubs played, the Blue Jays with a uh, run differential of plus 85 right now, still the best in the AL East, uh, even after that uh, beatdown 13-4 last night against the Boston Red Sox. Uh, The Blue Jays team from 2015 was around plus 100 uh, when they went out and, of course, uh, famously got uh, David Price and Troy Tulowitzki and went on some crazy, like, 43-19 and run in the second half to really uh, make themselves World Series favorites. Uh, In terms of this club, uh, five games over 500 now. uh, There's a lot of chatter in terms of the way how this ball club can improve. Uh, I I think if you look at the strengths and weaknesses from 2015 and 2021, 2015, a a historically great offense, Uh, the bullpen wasn't as bad as this year's club. And and the pitching staff, I think, was a little worse than than what you're seeing in terms of the starting rotation in 2021. Hinjin Ryu uh, finding himself a a great start uh, against the Texas Rangers. Uh, He recorded the first Blue Jays shutout for a starting pitcher since 2015. And then you have Robbie Ray, who's looking like a Cyan candidate. So there are discrepancies, but but yeah, I think it could be a transformative trade deadline on July uh, 30th. And, and who knows uh, what happens from there. Uh, despite that ass flipping last night, still the best run differential. And the Jays have the pieces to not only... Uh, take a wild card spot, which they're only three back of, but but the division as well, a ton of baseballs to still play. They're, they're seven games behind the Boston Red Sox, uh, two more to play in this series, and then shortly they have another four-game series coming up, so lots of time to make up ground. 
Yeah, tons of time. Uh, my only thing too uh, with this, Tom, is is you hammer on the Rangers, you hammer on the Orioles, and then when you come to the series where you can really gain the ground, you get hammered back. I, I, I just hate that aspect of what we saw yesterday. I know it was only the one game, but I was really hoping for a little bit of momentum over that Rangers series into this. You talked about pickups at the deadline. Uh, I mean, should we be disappointed if we don't see two relievers here on August the 1st? Yeah, definitely. But at, at the same time, it might not just be two relievers. Um, coming into the season, uh, the Blue Jays signed uh, Tyler Yates and David Phelps. And Yates never even pitched for the Blue Jays. Some people don't even remember that happened. And Phelps yeah. uh, had a great start and then was uh, done for the season. So even though the team just got Ryan Barecki back and Julian Merriweather, who's a massive question mark, big X factor, he's injured. You don't know what you can get from him. Uh, it, it's very, uh, the need for two high leverage relievers is glaring. Um, there are guys out there like uh, Richard Rodriguez from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, what the Chicago Cubs do is going to be fascinating as well. Multiple pieces that could actually really help the Blue Jays. Uh, at third base, there's a uh, former NL MVP, Chris Bryant, uh, in terms of starting pitchers, frontline guys, Kyle Hendricks, and then the big guy, Craig Kimbrell, one of the best closers of all time. Um, he's ninth on the all time list with 369 career saves. That's a very intriguing option. Uh, yeah. and, and he's been linked to the blue Jays. Uh, so, I, and then there's a team like the Texas Rangers, which, uh, Toronto just saw. Uh, Kyle Gibson can certainly help the rotation because I'm not so sure about Ross Stripling or Steven Matz. Uh, those guys are just way too inconsistent. Stripling has been hammered by the Red Sox all year. And, and that was a, that was a big spot for him. That, that was a statement game. The, the Blue Jays didn't show up and the Red Sox did. Right. So it, the team, yes, the most glaring uh, need is the bullpen, but just like in 2015, they didn't need to go out and get Troy Tulowitzki. They didn't need to go out and get David Price, but they did because it really took the team over the top. So maybe there's a move to be made like that as well. Uh, a left-handed power bat like Joey Gallo, like mm. can crank this offense from being like really good to just nasty. So what better way to win baseball games than just pound other teams to the ground so may maybe that's another strategy that the blue jays take if they can't really add the pieces that are could you imagine that, are... that outfield if gallo's here <laughs> holy <laughs> crap and, 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 and he's a, he's a gold lover as well right yeah. so you you solidify your team not only offensively but defensively as well we're in conversation with tom rominski from the score uh here on news talk saga 960 raw mike richards now springer because it's still you got to look at it like he's almost starting the season again i mean it's it's it's, it's still pretty early the 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 ceiling seems almost endless i mean he, that potential of of where he could go I, I don't know how big it gets but i just have a feeling like we really haven't seen what we've got yet no just flashes and yeah. unfortunately uh, multiple injuries ha have really kind of um put him in a in an awkward spot where this is almost like spring training for him like he's just getting all the all the at bats and all the reps to to really figure out his swing and his timing. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they, ultimately he goes back to the leadoff spot where, where he uh, it operates best out of. But I, I like him in, in the number four hole, obviously provides uh, protection for, for Vladdy. And then Teoscar, who's an all-star, is, is right behind him. Uh, really, in, in, in a lineup this dynamic, you can't really – put George Springer in a bad place outside of maybe like eighth or ninth. And, and he really is never going to hit there. But once Springer gets rolling, uh, man, oh man, like uh, what you saw against the Texas Rangers was, was just the beginning. Um, I, I know their, uh, their pitching staff is really bad, but uh, yeah, it's, it's there has the potential to be some, some really crooked numbers put, a, uh, put on the board uh, in the second half here. Yeah, Robbie Ray has been phenomenal. I mean, outside of his tight, tight pants, which yeah, this is an issue. Just so you know, it's a, it is an issue with Dave. I knew the pant talk because I yeah. know Robbie Ray. You're listening right now, and he goes, "If Bastel brings up my pants one more time." Yeah, well, well, well. Here in the series, the thing I love what he's doing on the field, but 
I, I'm not really a big fan of him wearing Lululemons. So you know what I mean? Like I, I, I but, but all seriousness, Robbie Ray has been a find for the Jays. I know they picked him yeah. up at the trade deadline and they kind of tinkered and thought, okay, here's a one-year deal at reasonable money, but they did not expect this. This guy's a frontline number two. And, and if you got one and two battling in a postseason, that's great. Maybe you're right on the Kyle Gibson thing to get the three because the way Ray is pitching right now, he might be some team's number one. I think he's actually the Blue Jays' number one. To, to be quite frank, he has been better than uh, Ryu this season. Uh, Ryu, uh, l- like I previously touched on, uh, a nice last start. Uh, but he hasn't been as, as sharp this year. Uh, outside nope. of that last start, his, his velocity has been down. He's been walking guys a little bit more, which is, which is strange because usually uh, pinpoint control is, is his MO. But Ray, every five days, you get the exact same thing from Robbie Ray. He pounds the strike zone. He's got elite swing and miss stuff. And he's really cut down on the walks. Uh, we're talking about a dude who led – all of baseball in 2020 in, uh, in walks. And you know what? I think we can chalk that up to a very weird pandemic shortened season. You guys must remember uh, that it, it, once they got to spring training, the, they were getting ramped up and then all of a sudden uh, uh, the work stoppage hit. And then there's a spring training 2.0 and these creatures of habit have to ramp up again. So I, I think we can, I think we can say that last year was an anomaly because Robbie Ray is a previous all-star. He has, he's done this at this level before and he's lining up uh, to make a lot of money. He's an impending free agent. Yeah. And I was, I was hopeful that the Blue Jays could retain him on maybe um, a three-year deal worth $60 million. I think Robbie Ray is pitching himself into the hundred mil conversation. Uh, a really nice comp is Zach Wheeler, similar career numbers. He's only 29 and yeah. he could be looking at a five-year deal worth around a hundred million. Are the Blue Jays willing to pay that to Robbie Ray? I don't know. I mean, he he's been a revelation, and it, we'll, we'll wait and see. But uh, yeah, it's it, it, what a luxury to have a uh, Ray and Ryu uh, pitching one-two uh, down the stretch here. Yeah. So two uh, two different body types, as I've, I've noticed. Yes, I, and, and in, in addition to the tight pants, he also yeah. grunts after every pitch. I mean, what a guy, right? Uh, yeah, you have to. It's, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's sports. It really is. In the second half, in the second half, uh, Tommy, I'm expecting big things from Rio just because of that mustache, by the way. And I'm going to oh. be so disappointed <laughs> if we don't see a mustache. Because, you know, sometimes you sit there and you go, I'm getting rid of it now. He better not get rid of it considering the start he had against the Texas Rangers. Yeah, just keep it going, right? Uh, but, uh, again, for Ryu to find his form, and for the first time in 30 starts, he hit 93 miles per hour on the radar gun. I mean, that's such good news for the Blue Jays. And, and you know, the all-star break works for in, in different ways for, for different guys. And and maybe Ryu found something. He was, he was tinkering. He was – he was working on some stuff and, and him coming back, feeling fresh and healthy is going to be great for Toronto. You know, someone asked me the other day about uh, Charlie Montoyo and said, you know, do you think he hangs around for, you know, they allow him to hang around for another uh, couple of years. And I was like, well, I don't think he's done anything to me that indicates he has done something where he shouldn't be around for a couple of years. The guys seem to play for him, which I'll be honest in major league baseball with the, 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 the grueling schedule they have and the proximity to all those guys all the time, especially when you're a team that didn't really have a home field. I mean, I, I think he's done a good job. I mean, how is he supposed to manage a bullpen when he kind of doesn't have one? I mean, I'm not going to yeah. pin that on him. That's, that's, you know, you give me some players, I'll manage the players that you give me. Uh, and as we all know, the, Shatkins uh, team uh, at, at times seems like they're making, they're calling the shots anyway. So I don't know. Have you seen anything that, that, that would indicate that this manager should be uh, swapped out? I, Cause I haven't seen it. I don't see it. Yeah. I, I think Chuck has done a, a fine job. Uh, it's easy to forget that last year he finished as a finalist for AL manager of the year. Uh, took a team that uh, a very young ball club that wasn't expected to do much and led them to the playoffs, albeit uh, an expanded postseason. Uh, the only criticism on Montoyo, and you touched on that, was his management of the bullpen. But at the same time, if if you're if you have a bunch of AAA guys 
and quadruple A guys that are that are coming out of the pen. What exactly are you supposed to do? I mean, you, you can't turn water into wine here. So and, and you can't run guys out every night and risk uh, these guys ruining their careers because of injuries. And, and finally, that some of these relievers are, are getting healthy for the Blue Jays. Uh, I, I think that that issue is, is going to be uh, taken care of, but yeah, I, I, I love Montero's positivity. I, mm. I, I think that he really plays with the lung, with the young Latin guys because of his ability yeah. to speak English and Spanish. And he seems like a really solid dude and a guy that you want to cheer for and, and you want to see succeed. And, and it's easy to throw Charlie under the bus because it, he's the first guy that comes to mind if something goes wrong. Right. So he's, he's, that's kind of just the way it goes. And until there's a true reason to get rid of Montoyo, he, he's going to be leading this team and, and they're just getting started as well, guys. Like the, this is, there's a lot of comparisons to the blue Jays in, uh, in, in the early and mid 1980s when they had a lot of really solid young players that were controllable. And I think uh, Montoyo is going to be at the helm of this ship for a while. Good. Good. Absolutely. And I agree too. Uh, your ability to communicate with, with the, you know, the predominance of, of Latin American players. I mean, come on. I mean, I don't want my manager going in saying, uh, Como, uh, esta, <laughs> what, was that? what was that again? <laughs> Lollygaggers, sir. Yeah. The Lollygaggers. <laughs> uno, uno cerveza, por favor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tommy, you take care. Hopefully we'll see you again real soon. Always fun having you on the show and, uh, and I'm sure we'll uh, talk again. Definitely, guys, and you know, hopefully, we'll uh, we'll see each other uh, at the dome this year. I know on yeah. Thursday at ten at Thursday at ten a.m. when the tickets uh, are going to go on sale, I'm going to have a lot of browsers open and going to be hitting refresh a lot. So <laughs> yeah, beautiful, yeah, great to see, absolutely. And then pictures of you and and your gal, uh, which I'm never in those pictures. They, I know you. I, I I see the fun that's being that's well, had, and I'm always like, well, Mike, well, where where where's where's my uh, fun picture? Mike, you got you got to leave your room, Mike, for that to happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is true that is true hey Tommy right, take guys. care thanks brother take care, care. Eh?